Hi and welcome back. Um, this is some of the finds from my local flea market that I kind of go to every weekend. It's right in town, just about eight minutes away. Um, I'm trying to take advantage of it now before winter hits in the next, I don't know, month or so. And after that, it might be closed till the spring. And if it is open, it's very scarce as far as vendors. Um, you may just find the local, the kind of the um, vendors that go in there all the time to sell kind of their new products or fruits, vegetables, but not some of the other stuff that they're trying to um, offload. This is the uh, vendor I hit when I first got in. Uh, he's a Stanley handyman. I believe this is a vintage like 1950s it's pretty neat it's not beat up it has a couple of uh, dings and dents but it's probably wasn't used a little bit of surface rust here this is going to be a soft restore i'm not going to refinish the wood as far as the color on here i may just polish everything off remove some of the surface rust put a wax coating on it call it a day what I like about this one, it's uh, pretty much complete, which is kind of rare with these ones that have the uh, end caps, removable end caps. It has pretty much all the drill bits included in here. It's eight of them. It has some kind of flute on the uh, back side, I guess for gripping at the jaws but this was pretty neat because it was uh, complete usually you don't find these however one of the ones I found a few weeks ago for two dollars I'm still trying to um, identify this one this is probably no this is probably like uh, back in September this one's also complete as far as uh, the bits go No, it's not. I have one around here that is complete. However, I didn't buy it because of that. I believe this one is a Miller Falls. It's missing some kind of guide here for the wheel, which I've seen online. And the information I've seen from this, it identifies as a Miller Falls. However, I haven't found any identification marks on this yet. However, this is a very nice one. This was two bucks um, back in early September. And then the other item I found there is a uh, Stanley $2.99 utility knife. Uh, this is one of their second, I believe this might be the second generation. Uh, last couple of videos I mentioned that I got this one for a dollar. This is made by Stanley, but they also made it under their other brand name Defiant, I believe. And that would say Defiant. Some of them said Stanley. Some of them didn't say anything. I think they might have been sold to other uh, distributors. These are cast iron. And uh, this one's still in good condition. Later on, they went to the aluminum. That's what this is. You can tell because it's worn in the corner here, I guess, from cutting boxes. For a very long time the aluminum just wears out that's the only damage in there however and somebody drilled the hole through the body I guess to attach some kind of lanyard or string however I couldn't pass this down it was a good find to add to the collection and then in the same table is a Lewis it's a safety utility knife it's complete it even has the original um, Lewis blades inside, but it's under a different name. And I've seen the blades online. And it's um, it says use Lewis blades, seal matic Company, Newark, New Jersey. And it's this style blades. On there it says uh, 0 0.025 inches USA, flash manufacturing, Newark, New Jersey, 
USA. Surprisingly, there's two blades on here inside, and they're pretty hefty as far as the gauge on these blades. And the third one that's installed, the inside is still new, and the outside, from what I can tell, was never used. It just has some surface oxidation. So I don't I believe that this particular Lewis um, utility blade, what they call the safety blade, was never used. However, you have to use the proprietary blade, this proprietary blade, because it has the what I you know looks like a little Mickey Mouse cut out on the blades here, and they fit into two detents on the holder here. So you can't use a standard modern utility blade. So this one looks like it's never been used. However, I'm not impressed with the fit and finish on this. I think this is a later model. Um, I have one here that I mentioned before, I think. This one here, I paid like I paid a dollar for this one. This one is in rough condition. However, this one with no blades in it, maybe it has a blade in it, it feels slightly heavier. This one is definitely like a zinc, it's not aluminum, some kind of zinc or pop metal uh, coated. However, all the edges here, all the forging edges are, is very rough. You can feel everything on here. Um, the raised portion, the stamp, this was like it's stamped, it still has flash sticking up. However, this one doesn't. This one is very clean as far as all the, um, fit and finish so this one I'm going to keep I'm still on the lookout for the uh, one of the original ones that has the art deco it looks like uh, three wings or three feathers stepping down in this direction um, I'm in the lookout for that one because I think that's uh, that 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 one's definitely from the art deco era this one's still fully functional I'm curious I never opened this up to see if um, this has original blades or not and it does it has one original blade that looks like it's been used in there and it has the same patent number as that one however I couldn't find the patent I did find one with the letter A added on to the end which was a by Lewis but a, I guess their improvement to this safety style utility knife. So what you see here, first table, the guy asked for four, I gave him four, he wanted two for this, and a dollar for each. I couldn't argue, it was a fair price, I took it. Um, this one is gonna be a keeper, just for display purposes. Um, I'm not gonna use this, I have roughly right now, you saw that earlier one, here's another one. This is a Stanley. I paid like a dollar. Again, oh, this is the one that had a few of the drill bits inside. And I paid a dollar for this one also. And this is a Stanley 624. It's complete. It has wear on it. It is it's jammed probably never been oiled so this will be restored uh, to working order this next vendor I've mentioned before this guy I wound up spending a ton of money today I didn't exactly go in there for this but he's sometimes he has absolutely nothing and then sometimes he has absolutely everything today he had a mother load of these cast iron pipe um, skillets he must have had at least 30 of them including a dutch oven complete with the lid handle same exact one that i purchased from him about a month and a half ago for about 20 25 dollars cleaned it up perfect condition i believe that's a wagnerware and we use it all the time last year i purchased um it was a USA made one. It was a number five, eight inch diameter skillet. That one is used every single day. 
And then a couple weeks ago, I picked up a number six, nine inch diameter skillet from another vendor. Again, that vendor was kind of selling a lot of household stuff and he had a few of them. He didn't know what he was kind of selling. I got that one for $4 and that one was a Wagnerware. It was a number uh, six, nine inch diameter skillet. However, this guy, he knows his stuff. Unfortunately, when the vendor knows what he's selling, he's not gonna give it to you for two or three bucks like you see on YouTube sometimes. And unfortunately for me, this is the only place I can go to find stuff like this. So I kinda, I wouldn't say I paid top dollar, but I, pay, I paid a lot less than if I were to purchase these online. However, the way I look at them, I'm hoping that this will last me my lifetime with a family. We've gone through so many of these cheap pots and pans in sets that after a few years they just go bad that i'm hoping that this is the last one so what you see here the first thing i saw was these adjustable stencils uh, these are two inch stencils the brass you can you know set them up it has a letter some punctuation some spaces However, the only letter I'm missing is the letter E. Fortunately for me is I never use these stencils um, by spray painting directly on them or painting. These were meant years ago to be used like a stencil brush, as you see on the picture, or outlining. What I usually do is take some um, hard, uh, cardstock and I'll line this up and I'll cut out. Yeah, I'll spend the time and cut this out using this and then I'll use that cardstock to then spray paint whatever um, I need to do as far as the project. However, I don't have one this big. Even though with the letter E, I can use the letter F, flip it over to get the bottom portion of the E for outlining or cutting it out. Um, I have from other flea market finds over the last many, many years, I have same brands. These are one inch letters top and bottom this is another brand with the one inch letters or just the numbers and then I have some small half inch letters that I picked up at an auction many years ago and it's actually the same company now this is general that's Reese and these have never been used but they were part of a lot that I picked up this is the number and this is the letter and again I use these to cut out the character and then spray paint whatever project I was doing mostly for upcycling however I'm digressing here and then I saw this on the same table I like I don't have enough of these this might be my number four or five however I've never seen one with a metal handle here this is a craftsman however I thought it was a unique piece it's not damaged at all it has a very unique thing I hope I can pick it up on camera here three screws have these kind of security bits they're not flat and they're not Phillip they're more like a hourglass shape so if I want to restore this I may have to sacrifice an old screwdriver and try to shape this profile in there so I can get to these screws but it's definitely not flat or nor um, Phillips it has like an hourglass with the rounded top and bottom however this is going to be a very soft restore I may kind of take it apart completely and this is going to be more for display I thought this thing was very cool uh, just the way it looks just because of this it'll still be usable but I won't use it and then in the mother load of um, iron skillets he had about 30 of them you know i figured let me get the rest of what we need and i think this is this will be it for cast irons so i got a number eight skillet here which i believe this is a 10 inch yeah about 10 and a half outside to outside and this is a wagnerware this one doesn't say sydney on it i think it's sydney ohio some mid mid uh mid state out there the last one I purchased from him was roughly a hundred years old based on the font this one's not too bad in condition it's very greasy here 
can feel it on my hands. This will be restored. The next one is a number 10. And that is 11 three quarters, let's say 12. As you saw, they were all nesting inside of each other. And this one is a Griswold, which my understanding is that these are very sought after. Cast iron skillet number 10, Erie, Pennsylvania, USA. Patent or model number 716 at the bottom. This one is a 12, it doesn't have a number on the handle. It is 12 and a half inches diameter. It's very hefty walls here. However, the only markings on the back, it says made in the US. It has that ring, which I don't have any of these. Um, it has a little bit of buildup, but very clean, no major rust. And the only thing I have here is it says uh, number 10, 12 and 7 16 inch. It looks like a 5H2 or 5R2, I'm not sure, until I clean it up. But either way, this is a hefty one. This will replace one of our made in China with the porcelain lining that I hate. The thing weighs a ton. And it's just all looks. Actually, this will replace most of our cookware that we have. Once I clean them up, we will use them for various dinners, you know. And I believe between the other ones that I purchased, the um, smaller one, the next two smaller ones in the Dutch oven, this kind of covers us. This will, unless I find something unique, this is it for me as far as cast iron. This whole set, he, like this said, this guy knows his body's is cast iron. Unfortunately, when you know that when the vendor knows, he's going to hit you up with a little higher. Unlike the one that I picked up for $4, he didn't care. This whole thing, he wanted $75. Um, I was only able to knock down $5, $70. So I'm looking at roughly about 20 bucks a piece. I'm into it for the other three that I have upstairs already being used. And these three, I'm into it for like $95 to $100 total. However, for that, even for $100, you can't buy this new. And I'm looking at it that way is that this is it. Maybe um, I'll get buried with these. Who knows? Our third lot today, this guy, the, these people, there's a few of them on that table. They have a lot of nice tools. You know, however, they got all the bins kind of marked out, labeled with prices. Cheapest thing you can find is two bucks. And they're kind of firm with you buy individual pieces. So I try to combine some part, um, pieces and try to knock off a dollar or two. First thing here is a uh, needle nose uh, Williams number 77 made in the US. However, I mean, I like to say this is early 1900s based on there is no embellishing on the handle. Most manufacturers when they first, uh, maybe not, I'm wrong about that. This could be uh, around the 40s, 50s. Embellishing was done earlier and then to save cost, they removed the embellishing and just made smooth handles until everyone, you know, jumped on the bandwagon with the either dipped handles or the sleeved handles later on in the 50s and to modern times. The reason I like this one because it has a very long nose. It has a slight little bend but it still functions pretty good. You know as far as uh, usage. I may try to kind of tweak that a little bit. This will be a user. Um, I'll probably do my regular finish that I did with this Croider that I used probably seen before, you know, belt sand it, then the Scotch-Brite wheels, oil the joints and call it a day. Then also there is a channel lock from Meadville, Pennsylvania, USA. 
I've never seen channel locks this old as far as looks. This has some embellishing on the side. This is still in good condition. The cutters on the previous one and this one are still in excellent condition. There's no damage to the cutter. This one, the uh, nose is in near perfect condition along with the uh, teeth. So this will have the same finishes as the other ones and it'll start replacing some of my newer vintage Craftsman ones that I have from the 80s and 90s. Um, I like those, but what I won't like about them is once you start to clean them up once or twice, the laser etching that they put on here disappears and they have that kind of foam type handle which after a couple years of usage just starts to get beat up and worn. I'm beginning to like these uh, bare metal ones. Here is a Dymaloy 6 inch or 150 millimeter crescent style adjustable wrench. Um, forged in the US alloy steel. This one is, I, I can't have to date it. This is from the Diamond Tool and Horseshoe Company. This one has the horseshoe trademark there, which was later removed. I believe they first, they went through a lot of, uh, several name changes. I think it was originally called the Diamond Caulk or Diamond Tool and Caulk. I mean, Caulk and Horseshoe Company. They removed the caulk. And then later on, they removed the horseshoe. And I think it's just now the Diamond Tool Company. This one is still in good condition. No damage whatsoever. It's, um, I have to deburr this one edge that I don't know if that was done at the factory or later on. The other side's in perfect condition. It is just dirty. I don't even think it has any surface rust. Um, the jaws still close tight. It has a little bit of what's bent over the edge. So I'm just going to tap that in with a ball peen hammer and oil it once I take it apart. Um, I don't think I'll be able to take this one apart. Oil it and call it a day. This is my smallest one. However, no, I do have a small one here. Taiwanese four inch. This is a toy. Literally, it's a toy. Came from one of those Home Depot toy kits for kids. And I wound up keeping this because <laughs> I needed something this small and surprisingly, it works. I mean, it's, it's 100 millimeter, it works. I'm hoping to one day find one this small, USA Vintage. And then from there, I jump up to eight inch. You've probably seen this first one previous. I have a Craftsman Vintage, which I love these older Craftsmans from the 80s and 90s. They have a nice fit and finish, uh, nice, uh, it looks to me like a nickel plating, could be chrome. I actually have the 10 inch versions, two of them, and I have a 12 inch versions, uh, three of them that I've picked up over the years. Uh, probably I've purchased one and the other one's either yard sales or auctions. And I just love them. I'm going to be getting rid of some of those. I might be getting rid of this other crescent one that's a duplicate of this one. And here is a uh, Proto. And I'll try to restore these before I sell them. However, this is my f smallest vintage one. This entire lot, as you see it, he wanted three each, nine. And the lowest I can knock him down was about eight. It was eight dollars. So you're looking at roughly under three dollars a piece. It's a little high, but some of these pieces are unique. Um, so sometimes I'll pay a little bit more because I know I'm not going to come across it, possibly. Some of the ones that I've seen common, I can get for a lot less, a dollar or two. So, you know, probably about 270 each for this lot. And these will all be uh, restored or cleaned up and used. The last uh, vendor, this guy mentioned him before 
he's always there every weekend rain or shine if it's raining he goes underneath the uh, overhang units if it's not he's usually on the outside which those uh, spots are usually cheaper I think he does a lot of house cleaning or people want to get rid of their stuff because half his stuff is either toys old comic books old household stuff and the other half is tools however he does have if you rummage through his stuff you'll find some gems in there and his prices are incredible half the time I don't even argue with him and he knows it because I can't it's just stupid or embarrassing if you do just to save a, a dollar or 50 cents I mean I can see if it was something big um, half the time I just don't argue I just give him the money sometimes I do um, picked up six uh, six uh, pieces from this lot first one is is a um, Croider half inch hollow punch it's in good condition a little bit of surface rush it does have a nick here however once I clean it up I may grunt try to grind this down very carefully since the half inches half inch diameters on the inside um, I'll bring this back to life probably um, blue this part I'll show you one that I have a vintage kind of new old stock and then run this part through the um, scotch bright I reason I bought this one because I'm wanting to start to collect more of the vintage which has the better steel than um, this set I purchased about a month ago this is uh, from Harbor Freight yeah, it's good I'm not gonna guarantee for light duty stuff it's a nine piece set from nine thirty seconds up to half inch I, ha I did have to do a lot of deburring on the inside and then oiled everything so it doesn't rust it's good for light duty but it's made from Chinese steel we all know that however for the eight bucks you can't expect more I'm not knocking it I'm just saying it is what it is so I'm trying to replace some of these and, and get some of the larger ones because I needed these before and I didn't have them and now that I have them I use them for making plastic washers and other stuff other items so I have that one set and then at the same flea market back in September I picked up this little lot possibly for about four bucks and the first one is a 5 8 Osborne punch it even has a brochure on the inside and this one was in near perfect condition it doesn't look like it was ever worn I haven't even cleaned this and this is what I mean about the end being kind of polished. And this one is paint painted black. And in there was with this box is a Croider quarter inch diameter one. Again, I think I might have touched this up. There is a no name brand. I like to say this is either a 08 or a 80, number 80. I know these were numbered. This is more like a quarter inch. This is this diameter is slightly smaller than a quarter than the quarter inch. So it could be a 30 second smaller. And then this one here is a number 12. It's it looks like a 516th diameter. There is a chart. It's actually in here to determine which one is which. I believe I cleaned these up, blued them, at least those last three. This is roughly three or about four dollars about a dollar a piece so this is gonna add this one's gonna add to that collection as I slowly start to find them the next piece is this forging the US craftsman wrench this is a boxed end on both sides what I liked about this one piece is one side is a quarter inch the other one's five sixteenths however it the length these are my standard length for the quarter inch and the five sixteenths as you see here however this comes in handy to get into a tight spot um, so this is a keeper and it's clean and no damage so this is just getting hung up then 
I found again last week I picked up an identical one like this almost identical a Croider I had a bunch of Croider wrenches or pliers about half a dozen last week a Croider 356 five and a half USA the one I picked up last week it's the same one Croider 256 five and a half however the only difference is that the uh, font this one's slightly smaller this one's slightly larger um, this is looks like it has a nickel electroplating on it however the finish on this you can see the uh, sanding marks which doesn't bother me this one's a lot smoother with the same plating and the only noticeable difference I see is the embellishing on the side I was able to identify this one from last week from the 50s this one has a slightly different embellishing is it from the 50s I don't know is it from the Art Deco area era from the um, mid 20s to mid 30s I don't know I know this is from the 50s so one of these is going to go and I think the one that's going to go is this one I'm going to still clean it up and resell it and then this will be my keeper uh, it's still no damage just some surface rust and some grime in the joint but however the joint works perfect the teeth are dirty but in good condition great condition and overall the piece is, is in excellent condition in, at least in my opinion the next one is another Croider diagonal pliers I actually picked this up last week and put it back down because I couldn't get it open <laughs> it's tight and today I was able to open it and I decided to grab it this is by far my smallest diagonal cutters the cutter is still in great condition there is no damage to it no dings no dents um, it just probably needs a little sharpening and this will be a keeper you know take down some of the forging marks like scout crafter does I'm not gonna bring this polish this but I'll make it look like the one you continuously see because it's one of the two that I have finished so far I have this uh, needle nose pliers which is uh, Shelton and then this Croider buttons pattern pliers I love this thing here I keep saying that and then I found this scissors scissor it's a uh, FF company I believe yeah FF company USA really nice scissors I mean no rust except I guess sitting water there I'm hoping I can unscrew that with no damage buff that out um, do some light sanding and buff that out I don't even know if I'm going to sharpen these because these things not a skip in it I mean these are great for a little for little details with three kids and projects and all sorts of things these things are great and then I found this I have to look do the research it's from uh, another slip pliers however th what's unique about this slip pliers it has a wire cutter built into it in the uh, center between the jaws uh, it's loose so I'll have to once I take it apart retighten the uh, joint nut there and it, this looks like it has again a nickel electroplated nickel finish um i'll be able to I'm, I'm most likely gonna bead blast this not take it to the sander with um very fine glass beads and re-nickel plate this in parts it has no damage just a lot of surface rust again from the embellishing that i see here i'm thinking again art deco area era 20s 30s but I'll have to do my research either way it'll probably pop up when I edit this video and what I liked about this one is that I don't know how to figure out what the function of this is is that one jaw 
<clears throat> has a slot or it's it's been grounded in line with the jaw the rest of the teeth on there are just dirty on both ends and then and if you look at the jaw jaws each one is shaped a little different the one on the left is a little straighter the one on the right here has a slight curve and then it curves in more so these were you know I like to say these were specialty pliers you know could have been a farm type of uh, tool that slot in the one jaw could have been for some kind of function maybe to hold a wire to pull to straighten a nail I, I don't know I thought it was very unique it'll be a user um, I like the fact that it does have the wire cutter in there in the jaw which sometimes I'm messing around with a plier and then I got to pull out another plier just to cut a cable or a wire or a coat hanger if I use it for hanging other projects to, to finish this entire lot, as you see, I thought he was going to hit me with like 10 bucks and now I have to kind of negotiate with them and joke around with them. He's at $5. Six pieces, $5. What's that? I mean, do the math. 90 cents a piece? Well, am I doing that right? Not even. Maybe 85 cents a piece. I mean, how can you even try to um, negotiate or bring down the price? So I took it. I thought it was a great deal. Um, like I said, all of these, you know, except for this one and then some minor cleanup on this one, the rest of them, and then this one would be cleaned up too and some repair. You know, um, three of them, half of them will be restored and used. And I'll be able to get rid of some of my newer vintage, um, depending on what configuration of uh, pliers and replace them with this ongoing collection well this was been my entire find for today Saturday at that flea market uh, again you kind of pay or at least I do some higher costs like on items like this however I look at it is I make it up on some of the smaller items or hand tools vintage hand tools that are few bucks each anyhow I have my work cut out with these three which I have to start first because they're the biggest items get them cleaned restored and in back in use again thank you very much for watching enjoy and hopefully I plan to go back tomorrow and put out a video on that again have a good one thank you